today I'm gonna quickly go through the fiber bronchoscopy and how to design its miniaturized objective lens with wide field of view. First of all, bronchoscopy is an endoscopic technique to visualize the inside of the airways for diagnostic and therapeutic purpose. There are mainly two types of bronchoscope. The first one is rigid bronchoscope. It has relatively large diameter. It's efficient for blood suction and good for removal of large tissue samples. The other one is flexible fiber bronchoscope. It has much smaller diameter and the side channels it has helps with biopsy. The biggest advantage is it's very flexible and introduces much less pain to the patient. The fiber bronchoscope has primarily two parts, the eyepiece where eye doctors can look into and the objective that goes inside the patient's airway. Let's take a close look at the distal end. It has an illumination channel and the main imaging channel. But for more advanced bronchoscope, there are respectively channels for water, air, and the channel to perform biopsy and also illumination. And lastly, the imaging channel that is connected using optical fibers. And this is the part we will be focusing on for the rest of the video. Usually the diameter of the entire tube is only around 5.5 mm, which indicates the very tight constraints on the size of the imaging channel diameter. Here is a sketch of the objective system. The object we're trying to image here is the lung tissue. The length of the whole system is suggested to be shorter than 8 mm to keep the form factor as small as possible. At the conventional imaging plane, the fibers relay the image to the other end of the fiber and will register the image onto an eyepiece or a digital screen. The objective design is performed with ray tracing software Code 5. Here we adopt one of the examples from the following patent to be our starting design. The objective lens has five elements in total, one positive group and one negative lens group. The aperture stop is placed in between these two groups. In order to correct chromatic aberration, the two elements in the double-lit lens has refractive indices differ by more than 0.02 and the number differ by more than 15. An optical filter is placed in between the last lens element and the image plane as well. Before starting optimizing the patent lens, we need to figure out the constraints and our expectations from the system first. Here we set the effective focal lens to be 1mm as according to the patent and f number to be low to 2.5 because large aperture enables high collection power of the weak light signal. The bronchoscope available on the market generally have full field of view of 85 degree to 120 degree so far. For bronchoscopy applications, the angular field coverage is preferred to be as large as possible to allow for the maximum observation of the lumen. So here we're aiming for more than 120 degree as our target design. Regarding the wavelengths, one effective method is laser-induced fluorescence endoscopy. Under this method, abnormal tissue appears from red on a green background, as shown on the right. The filtered blue light source generates green autofluorescence image, and the red light source is used to obtain red reflectance image. Therefore, our wavelength in the design is set to be 480, 580, and 680, and are equally weighted. To determine the object distance range, let's take a look at the depth of focus, or depth of field. This refers to the longitudinal shift of the image sensor, or the shift of the object. 
This shift will produce an image degradation, but as long as the degradation is acceptable, the shift distance is within the depth of focus or the depth of field. Brown chastoscopy benefits a lot from the large depth of field. Standard brown chastoscopy has limited ability to accurately localize lesions that cannot be directly visualized. Therefore, the system needs to remain a high resolution, even when the object is extremely close to the front surface of the lens. In this application, we will push our target object distance from 7mm, where the biopsy can be successfully performed to 50mm, where normal detection distance usually is. Different from the usual CCD sensor, now our sensor is one end of the imaging fiber. It should have the matte image with the same size as the blue circle. The other distal end is connected to a CCD. The 30,000 picture elements in the fiber bundle gives decent resolution and good flexibility due to the easiness of bending. The sensor size is 2 mm in diameter. Considering the packaging configuration and efficiency, the diameter of the single fiber as well as the pixel pitch is estimated as 11 micron using this equation. And this pixel size is important for us to calculate the Nyquist frequency. Along with these other performance and packaging constraints, now we can go on putting into the optimization parameters. One thing to notice is that the MTF on the top means modulated transfer function. This is a measurement of how well an optical system can transfer contrast at a particular resolution from object to the image space. Ideally and conventionally, the minimum contrast here needs to be 50% and the image resolution required is 32 line pairs per millimeter, which is calculated from the Nyquist frequency we obtained before. This is the interface of the code file. The lens data manager allows us to put in the parameters of the lens diameter, lens thickness, and glass materials. The command window here is where we input all the constraints to optimize the system. Here shows several midpoint designs I had during the design process. The first one fills in the thickness constraint. The second one has relatively better optical performance but has really pointing edges which is not good for the purpose of mechanical mounting. The third one shows that the telecentricity is poorly constrained. Telecentricity in the image space is very helpful with a good illumination. Here the final design has an overall lens of 7.68mm and the largest diameter of the lenses is 3mm. If compared with a quarter, the actual size is smaller than a quarter of the quarter. To further verify this new optical system works well, we change the object distance to respectively 15mm, 25mm, and even push to 6mm, which is 1mm shorter than our target distance. The modulated transfer function fully meets our expectation of having more than 50% contrast at 32 line pairs per millimeter. Here is a comparison of the pattern lens and the new lens design. We have an object fed into the image system, with the pattern lens has 120 degree full field of view, the new lens has 123 field of view. At the same number of line pairs per millimeter, the contrast improves significantly. The relative illumination remained the same through the entire field of view for the new lens, while for the old lens, the brightness drops down very quickly, starting from the half of the field. The new lens also has much less distortion. Overall, this is very beneficial for locating the lesions accurately, with less distortion, 
more brightness across the whole field and a higher resolution. The painless non-invasive alternative is a capsular endoscopy. Unlike conventional endoscopy that may only reach to the first 3 to 6 feet of the bowel, the capsular flows through the digestive system. It has a transmitter, a battery, a color radio camera, and an LED source. It takes about 8 hours to pass through the human body, and it can take 2 pictures per second. This kind of design with even more compact size and non-invasiveness will surely become the trend of the endoscopy. And thank you for watching this video.